AI powered chatbots are revolutionizing the business world with every enterprise seeking to integrate this cutting edge technology yet the issue of data privacy continue to haunt the business world and the reason is obvious using closed source large language model as your chatbot this is where we have an exciting solution to use open source large language models as a viable alternative in this video we will implement a rack pipeline using open source large language model with the frameworks like langchain and agging face transformers so let's get started first let's understand retriever augmented generation with an example i live in bangalore india in bangalore we have this beautiful place called iskon temple to those who don't know what iskon temple is it is a place where people worship lord krishna who is a supreme god in indian religion you need to visit it once so what i do is i just ask a prompt at what time does iskon temple open i know the response i know the timing uh, at when it opens in the morning and when it opens in the evening but i want to see what chat gpt returns so when i ask this prompt chat gpt gives a weird looking answer which is true like the opening hours of iskon temples can vary depending on the location and obviously uh, since iskon is not just part of bangalore there are different places or different state in india where we have iskon temple but the actual response is i need the timing i can't find the time in this particular response so what i do i update the prompt and then i ask the question like at what time does iskon temple open now what chat gpt will do it will look into the context and then it will generate a response adding its own intelligence make sure what i say it will look into the context it will generate a response based on its intelligence this is very important when we we'll, we will talk about rack let's understand what kind of uh, prompt engineering you can do we have zero shot prompting now zero shot prompting is when you ask a direct question we have few shot prompting where you are asking a context and then you are asking a prompt but let's understand the issues with large language models one such issue is hallucination hallucination everyone now first know what hallucination is if you have worked with large language model uh, whenever a gpt or any large language model returns a response which is out of context or which is not factual is addressed as hallucination and one more issue with large language model is knowledge cut off since since it is trained on large corpus of data it has certain limit until what time it is trained on so if you ask chat gpt like a question saying who won cricket world cup 2023 probably it won't answer because the cricket world cup took place in november 2023 and chat gpt doesn't have the context to it now this might vary if you are using gpt4 because in gpt4 if you have plugin installed you can access to internet data but in this case i'm not talking about internet data i'm talking about the data on which gpt was trained on and one such issue is also domain specific factual responses it's true that chat gpt can answer many domain specific response let's take medical when we ask any medical related question chat gpt will return a response but factuality it is not correct it is somewhere near to the actual response but there is more improvement that needs to be done this is where we have retrieval augmented generation let's take a example query the example query can be at what time is con temple open and you can pass this text directly to the language model rather you need to convert that into a numerical format you can do this using embedding model so what embedding model does is it will convert your text into vector form which is embeddings and once you have the embeddings you will look into your vector database and retrieve the relevant documents now what are these relevant documents this relevant documents can be morning timing evening timing now i ask my prompt that is at what time does his contemple open so we convert that into embeddings it will look into the database and 
it will perform certain search technique schematic search and it will return the retrieve documents or retrieve context this context you will pass to our language model along with query this is what we did in future prompting once you have both of this you can directly use a large language model and large language model will generate a response so this is a normal flow of rack and this particular image was taken from any scale blog and this is a very beautiful blog on building rag on production you can check it out later let's understand how you can save your external data into a vector database let's take an external data the external data can be pdf it can be document it can be ppt it can be youtube url it can be a website you need to pass this external data you need to extract on the context and do data pre processing data pre processing is where you remove unwanted context you convert your text into something which is smaller form of your text and then you convert your text into embeddings and then you store it in a vector database usually databases are used to store things but vector database are special it will also perform different search technique like similarity search cosine similarity nearest neighbor and all such things and once you have the vector database this is where rag pipeline start so let's divide the rag into three different tubs we have retrieved we have augmented we have generation in this step one of retrieval we have a user who ask a query converts that query into embedding which is a vector form look into vector database perform certain search technique and it will retrieve a context so this context is your document let's come to the step 2 in augmentation whatever query you have large language model have their own prompt template so you need to use that particular prompt template to convert your augmented prompt in generation you take the prompt you also consider the retrieved context you pass it to a large language model and it will generate a response it might sound tricky but let's look at via code so let's get into the code demonstration it's about time we start building rag pipeline using open source large language model the only thing you need is google collab notebook so quickly open google collab notebook the use case that we will build here is chat with website now in chat with website our external data is a website url and we can store this entire website content in a vector database and then we can ask any prompt let's start with the installation for the installation we need langchain which is an end to end llm framework that we can use in this case and we also have sentence transformers our sentence transformers is optional uh this is mainly need when you need to create the embeddings for your text and we have chroma db chroma db is an open source vector database that we will use in this particular code demo i have attached the same image from the presentation that is external data chunking vector embeddings vector database four components external data which is my website chunking vector embeddings and vector database and then we have one more uh, we have two more we have retriever and we have large language model so let's quickly import them uh, this is some extra text let's remove it so what are the four first components from like chain dot document loaders let's import web base loader so this is my first component the second component is from line chain i need to do pre processing that is nothing but chunking for chunking we have something called as what is it it's actually text splitter yeah we have text splitter from text splitter let's import recursive uh, i don't know what it is so let's wait collab notebook will give you the suggestion it's recursive character text splitter next comes embedding it's from line chain import embeddings 
since we are working with open source, let's use Hugging Face Inference Embeddings. It's actually Hugging Face Inference API Embeddings. The speciality of Hugging Face Inference API Embedding is, once you pass your embedding model, it will not download it. Rather, it will run on the cloud. So for this demo purpose, we can use the Inference API Embeddings. The fourth component is Vector Stores. So it should be Vector Stores Import Chroma. So these are our fundamental four components. And then we have our large language model. Now large language model is our Ugly Face again from Ugly Face Hub. And then we have Retriever. And in order to use Retriever, we need to use Retriever QH8. I hope I entered my spelling correct. It should be chains. From Langchain chains, import retrieval. It's actually retrieval. I don't know whether it is small QA or capital QA. Yeah, it's capital QA. Uh, we have our six block or six components using which we will build our pipeline. Let's start with the code. But before we proceed with the code, there is one thing we need to do, and that is to set up our Hugging Face Access Token. Now, why do we need Access Token? In order to use Hugging Face Hub and Hugging Face Embeddings, we are not loading the model. Rather, we are using an Access Token so that we are directly running this model on Hugging Face Cloud. And in order to do that, let's create a variable and copy our copy our uh, what you call access token in order to not make it publicly visible i have this library called get pass so from get pass i will import get pass and here what i will do is i will pass this function uh, let's quickly get our green uh, face token First, you need to create your account on huggingface.co and once you create your account, click on your profile image and select settings. In settings, on your left hand side, you will see something called as access tokens. And in the access tokens, since you will be creating your first token or any token, you need to click on new token. And once you click on new token, it will ask you to enter the token name. I'll just write a uh, rag open source. And you need to select the role to be right. Select role to be right and generate a new token. And it might have generated a new token. You just have to copy it. Copy. It's copied. Come back to your collab notebook. Run this particular piece of code. Now, if you can see, it is asking me to enter my token. I will just paste it. That's it. And one more step what you need to do is, you need to save it in your environment variable. Uh, the environment variable is again face. It's again face hub API token. And you just pass your HF token. That's it. Okay, sorry, it's actually small letter token. My bad. That's great. Now what we do is, we take our website URL. Uh, in our case, I'll be using my own uh, portfolio link just to avoid copyright or using some other external website. So I'll use my own website that is tarunjain.netleafpy.app. That's it. So this is the URL. And now what we do is we pass this URL to my web base loader. <coughs> so I just pass my uh, URL to the web base loader. This is done. And now, once you add your data, you also need to load the content. 
so let's load the content data dot load so we need to load our content so let's print what is inside my content so as you can see we have my name it's about me I have my nav bar for nav bar you can check out my website uh, I'm not doing self promotion but just to see if we are able to retrieve all the document or not so we have uh, about me events achievements and all uh, yeah we are able to extract the nav bar then we have where I work, devrel at AI planet, community lead, embedsend.ai, gd, nml. Yes, we are able to extract the content. We are able to extract the content from the website. Sure. Now let's proceed. The next step is we need to do chunky. So let me add subtitles. So the next step is chunking. Or you can also call it as text splitter. So text filter is nothing but whatever content you have, you need to break that down into a smaller segment. The reason why we do chunking is when you have a larger context or larger uh, larger document, there might be repetition and diversity in your document. In order to avoid that issue, we just do the chunking, which is more convenient method to extract your relevant documents. So we split text splitter. Now the text splitter was recursive character text splitter. Here we need to pass the chunk size. In our case, I'll use chunk size to be 256. And there is one more very, very important uh, argument, which is called chunk overlap. I'll tell you the significance of what chunk overlap is. Let me assign chunk overlap to be zero. We will change this chunk overlap so that you can see the significance of this argument. Let's run it. And now we will do the chunking. Text splitter. We need to split the documents. It's actually split documents. And here we pass my content. It's done. Let's check the chunking length of the chunking it's 33 uh, now i will show you the importance of chunk overlap zero uh, let's take the chunk chunking of my index three okay so as you can see uh, it starts from communities so let's take two as well uh, chunking to be two uh, that is my second index. So as you can see, my second index starts with, hello, my name is Tarun Arjay and I'm a passionate follower with expertise in machine learning, image processing, deep learning. I have published over 80 blog articles. So there is some context and my second chunk index is ending at various. Now, if you look at third chunking, it starts from communities. Uh, so the complete format will be, I have published over 80 blog articles documenting my code journey and I'm actively involved with various communities including Hugging Face, Keras Working Group, DeepLearning.ai. Now what I do is, I'll convert my chunk overlap to be 50. So let's see the difference. So you can see the difference over here. Um, you can see chunking 2 ends at various Chunking 3 starts with communities. So chunking 2 will definitely end with various, but now here is where you need to observe the change. My chunk 3 will not start with communities. Rather, it is starting with journey and actively involved with various communities. So if you look at these particular tokens, journey and I'm actively involved in various, it is already available before. It is already available in the previous chunk. So what chunk overlap will do is, its beginning of the uh, context is already available in previous con previous chunk. So this is what chunk overlap does. So let's proceed. Let's proceed with the code. Now what we'll do is we'll add our embedding model. And how do we choose our embedding model? 
there is a leaderboard on Hugging Face. Uh, you can check out which particular embedding model is performing better. And then based on that, you can decide what embedding model you can use. So I've already decided what embeddings model I need to use. So let me quickly initialize it. Hugging Face Inference API Embeddings. And here I need to pass my API key, which is HF token. And one more thing, I need to assign model name. So this is my embedding model name. And the name is BWAI backslash we have BGE base English version 1.V version 1.5. That's it. So we have our embedding model. Now what we need to do is we need to pass my chunking by embedding model, then save it in a vector database. And how do I do this? I need to create a vector store. I need to create a vector store by the name Roma. In Roma uh, run documents is the function. In this from documents, I need to pass the chunking with the embedding model. Chunking with my embedding model. So now what it will do is, it will look, uh, what is this embedding? It's embeddings. So now what this particular statement will do is, whatever chunking I have, it will create the embeddings of it and store it in a Chroma DB, which is a vector database. So it's gonna take few seconds No, uh, it's gonna take few seconds. Until then, let's proceed. Let's add our uh, large language model. Now, what is our large language model? It is an Hugging Face up. So let's take our model. Uh, so what is this model name? Model name is Hugging Face up. And from Hugging Face up, let's use a better model which has lower chances of hallucination. So as I said, it will take 40 seconds. I mean, few seconds. Uh, so the vector store is done. Uh, now let's use our language model, which is from Hugging Face. We need to use any open source model. And the better model that I can think of as of now is Zephyr, which is a fine-tuned model of Mr. Repo ID. The repository name is Hugging Face. Let's pour. Zephyr 7 billion parameter alpha model. So this is my model name. I also need to define few keyword arguments. That is model KW, which is keyword arguments. And few of the keyword arguments are the major one, temperature. Uh, you can either set temperature to be 0 0.5. If you don't want any randomness, you can keep it zero. Or if you need creativeness, you can keep 0 0.9. Uh, for this case, I'll just use 0 0.5, which is default or normal. And I also have maximum length. Or you can also use maximum new tokens. Now maximum new tokens is the sequence length that you need to add. Uh, in our case, it should be around 512. You can also make it 1024. Yeah. There is one more uh, hyperparameter, which is max length. Uh, you can also set this to be 64 or 5. Let's run our model. So as you can see, it is not downloading. And that's the reason why we use access tokens. Now we need to use retriever. Now retriever, uh, you can use Chroma DB retriever itself. So what you can do is you can do vector store as a retriever. So our vector store itself acts as a retriever that can perform various search technique. We can also define what kind of search type we need. Uh, if you look at this particular arguments, we have search type uh, defines the type of search that the retriever should perform. We have similarity, we have MMR, 
MMR, if I'm not wrong, it is maximum marginal relevancy. And we also have similarity score threshold. So based on this search technique, we can pick anyone. Since by default it is similarity, you can keep it to be same. But I'm not that guy. I'll use MMR. And there is one more very important keyword that is K. How many relevant documents that you need to extract? Uh, we will look into this, how uh, K value matters. So now what you need to do is you need to create a search keyword argument. Search keyword argument. Inside this, you have something called as K, which is how many documentation you need to retrieve. I'll just tell one. That's it. Now let's verify. Let's verify it. Uh, you can ask any query. You can ask any query. I'll tell you who is Devrel at the planet. Okay, so I asked this query. And I want to see what kind of relevant documents can I extract. So I'll just type documents relevant uh, from retriever. Retriever dot. So there is a spelling mistake. It should be a b. Retriever get relevant documents. So I need to check what kind of relevant documents am I able to retrieve. Uh, I'm too bad with the spellings. It should be get relevant documents. And I need to pass my query. So docsrel will generate the uh, relevant documents. So as you can see, devrel at AI planet is mentioned here. And my name is also mentioned in this particular chunk. So let's change my k value to be 2. So you can observe the change. As of now, I can only see one single content, one single document page content. Now look when I run this. I can see two page content. This is page content 1. This is page content 2. Now page content 2, I do have my name. But it's not relevant. Uh, that is the reason why since I have very less amount of content in my website, I am keeping my k value to be 1. If you have your document such as PDF, which is very complex and which is very lengthy, you can keep k value to be somewhere around 5 to 10. You can decide that based on uh, what kind of reputation is there in your document. Uh, since my content is very less, I'm using it one. I repeat it again. If you have very complex data, keep k to be 5 to 10. So let's rerun all this cell. So far, we are doing good, but we have not connected LLM with the retrieve document. This is where we need a chain. Now that chain is our retrieval QA. So we use retrieval. Uh, just let me see retrieval QA. We need to create a chain. We need to create a chain type. We need to define our LLM model. And we need to define our retriever. Uh, we need to define our retriever. And our retriever is defined as retriever itself. And uh, what kind of chain type you need? There are four different techniques. One is tough, one is refine. Um, refine is nothing but it will generate an original answer. Based on the original answer, your LLM will define the response. Then we have map re-rank, uh, which will re-rank your response based on the retrieved context. And we have map reduce. So chain type, we can define it to be stuff. You can also make it refine. In most of the case, I use refine. But what refine is, it takes too much of time to generate the response. I will do it. Um, I'll show the response with refine. I'll also show the response with stuff. But let's start with stuff. So we are able to run the chain. Now the only thing is, 
we need to create the augmentation so far what we have done is this particular retriever right this particular retriever is the first step this is the step one that is retriever so retriever is nothing but you are using a vector store and you are creating a retriever and this particular thing where you are doing the chain this is the step three for generation now step two we'll add it here we need to create a template the augmented template that we discussed in our slides augment that is your prompt set the prompt so let's create a test the prompt uh, for each model there is certain prompt template that you need to follow so let's use a template over here we have a template i'll make this to be prompt and the template goes something like this it starts with system and now system prompt and it is closed by yes and here you can write your system prompt my system prompt will be we you are an ai assistant that follows instruction extremely well please be truthful and give direct answers so this is my system prompt i have defined my system prompt and after system prompt we have a user now user prompt is nothing but the query what a user will ask so we have a user and we are defining the query what user will ask so let's make this as to be upstream uh, i'll ask a query here. i'll ask a query is tarun a cde in ml this is my query this particular query i will pass inside user and then again i will close my i will close my prompt uh, and then i'll use a assistant so assistant is nothing but what will be the response from the chatbot we have a system prompt we have the user prompt and then we have the assistant prompt which is empty because the particular large language model will generate that so this becomes my prompt and now what i do next i need the response and for response i need to pass my prompt inside the chain so i hopefully it should not give me any error that's said it so let's print the response uh for in order to print response we need to get the answer because it will also generate the query and okay is it result yes so as you can see um when you run this response right when you run this response it will add the query as well so query is nothing but your prompt template and then it has one more uh, key which is result inside result you can see the response yes tarun arjain is a google developer expert in machine learning this title is awarded to individuals who have demonstrated exceptional technical knowledge and expertise in this specific field and who have a significant contribution to the developer community tarun has been recognized for his works in machine learning and deep learning and has contributed to various open source project and shared through his blog and other platform this is what zephyr can do this is the power of open source large language models so you can test around with different prompt you can check this rack file line and there is one more addition that you can do by adding text free ranking and use a very big pdf data this particular polar notebook will be attached on uh, the description please do follow and happy learning thank you so much